Hi, Marilyn Hall. I have an idea for you today of something you can do to add a little something extra to your normal dirndl pattern. You're going to need either the tissue paper, the kind you use to wrap your presents, which you'll have to iron out so it's nice and flat, or you could use a roll of a doctor's examining table paper, and that's what I'm going to use. And then you're going to start with your regular pattern. I'll show you something cool you can do. Well, this is the dress that I was wearing, and it has an extra layer of fabric along the neckline that I trimmed out using an elegant upholstery trim. I'll show you a few other examples of dirndls with overlays. Sometimes I use fabric from the skirt or repeat the same trim along the hemline. On this turquoise dress, I've trimmed it with a strip of decorative fabric and applicated along the neckline. And then on this dress, I cut a straight strip from the skirt's fabric, which had to be snipped and overlapped to follow the curve of the neckline. This shiny red dress has a black band-like overlay along the armholes. A simple black overlay on dark green is really beautiful too. So I'll show you a little step-by-step -step of how I came to get this going. These are the pattern pieces for the dirndl I'm making. This is the center front, the side front with sort of a strap attached to it, and this would be the shoulder seam, the back, center back, and the side back. I've got them assembled in this strange fashion to kind of show you what they'll look like when they're all sewn together. And to make my overlay pattern, I will assemble this along the neckline, I'll lay my tracing paper over this area, and I'll make a little pattern for an overlay that will follow the contour of the neckline. And there's my little pattern right there. Now I ended it right here at the bust line because this particular overlay is going to be made of leather. It's kind of thick and I didn't want it to go all the way to the zipper and make an awful lot of bulk there. Plus I'm going to sew some sequins on here and it will be quite bulky. So I'm ending my overlay right here at the bust line. It's important to note that the center back pattern piece of my dirndl has an indication that it should be placed on a fold of fabric so that when you cut out your fabric, it'll make a piece that unfolds to reveal the two sides as a mirror image. Because my overlay pieces need to be sewn together in the center back, I had to add seam allowance to the overlay pattern like this. I cut out my bodice pieces using this fun black and gray cheetah fabric. Then I sewed the back pieces together and sewed the front and back together at the shoulder seam. Out of my leather, I cut two pieces using that overlay pattern, one for the right side and one for the left side. After I've sewn the two overlay pieces together in the center back, I'm going to cover the whole entire outer edge here with my pink flowered piping. As I was sewing my piping onto the overlay, I made little snips into the seam allowance of the piping, being really careful not to go through the stitching, so that it would nicely lay down as it rounded the corners. Because my overlay is leather, it was too tough to use pens to hold the piping where I wanted it, so I just used tape to hold it in place, or I fed the piping carefully under the sewing foot kiss, just keeping it placed with my fingers, and that works too. I continued adding the piping all along the edge of the overlay until I got to the end. Next, I turn it over and snip little wedges out of the seam allowance of the leather. This helps to reduce the extra bulk so that it'll lay down smoothly when I fold the seam allowance in under the overlay. It's so exciting to see how sharp the pink and black look together. I can't wait to lay it over the cheetah print fabric of the bodice. It's going to look really great. All right, now I've got this hot pink piping all sewn on. This is the center back. I'm going to start here with the center back and kind of turn the, inner, uh, turn the seam allowance in. And then I'm going to place it right on top of the center where it needs to be, where there's a little line here that lets me know it's the center back. I'm going to start right here on the center back, placing this uh, here, and work my way to the front. And pin it in place, and then I will come through and top stitch it close to the pink. Right. I pinned this entire suede leather trim all the way from the back to the front on both sides. And I'm going to simply top stitch right along the pink and then I'm going to come through and baste the uh, raw edges together. With all the thick, bulky layers of the overlay, I decided it's a better idea just to stitch in the ditch. So I stitched right along the edge of that piping, and that was awesome because then the stitching was just hidden in the ditch. So then I basted the raw edge of the overlay with the raw edge of the bodice, and that way when I sew the piping along the edge, all the edges are going to hold together, and I don't have to worry about these layers coming apart. And now the entire overlay is sewn onto the bodice, and the raw edges are basted, and it's time to move on. Now I'm going to take this piping and cover this edge on both sides and then I'll sew these front pieces to that. 
I have one of them done. Now if you were to lay this flat, you see how it kind of puckers up? That's because right here is where it contours out for the bust. I'm going to sew pink piping along each armhole. I'm sewing my pink flowered piping along the raw edge of the leather overlay along the neckline, starting at the front edge where the zipper will be sewn. So I'm just feeding the piping along under the sewing foot, being careful to make sure I keep it equal distant from the edge, using my eye and the edge of the fabric to gauge where the piping needs to be. It's important to take your time so that the piping will be consistent and not too wide and not too thin. Well, I'm almost to the very center of the back. And this is a, a place that gets a little tricky. Now I'm going to go a little closer. And see, it's going to have a V. It's going to change directions here. And there's a nice sharp corner. It's not 90 degree angle, but kind of close to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through, before I uh, get ready to sew that, I'm going to trim this um, seam allowance of the piping a few times. Being careful not to go through the stitching, of course. And in fact, I might just, uh, let's see, that middle little section out, I'm going to cut a little section of it out like this, just to kind of cut down on some of the bulk. When I get to the very, very center of this, of this um, peak that goes down here, which is right where that pin is, when I get to that spot, I'm going to stop with my needle in and I'm going to turn this piping at a 90 degree angle, well, almost a 90 degree angle. And this is one of those places where you just have to take your time. So I'm going to go down and just when I get to that pin that's holding the marking where that exact center is, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go slow. Sometimes I actually just will use the hand knob until I get in exactly that spot. And there it is. And then I stop, lift up the presser foot, and I'm going to turn the fabric until I have it lined up how exactly I need it to be and I'm going to proceed going the other direction. So I had time to do some hand sewing and maybe I went a little crazy here but I sewed all of these sequins and beads along the neckline of this dirndl. Uh, the only thing I haven't done is I'm not sewing all the hooks on the front yet because that's going to go through all the layers of the lining and everything. So now I'm going to take the lining, which is right here, it's got the interfacing on the back of it, and I've already uh, sewn in where the casing will be for the boning. I'm going to lay this on my table, lining side down, I'll center the bodice front, lay it on top of there, kind of sandwich it, and I'll, I'll uh, match up the center back and all of the seams and work from the center out, and I'll pin the neckline right along where I sewed the piping, and I'll pin the armholes where I sewed that piping, and I'll make sure before I go any further that everything lays down flat. I'm going to sew the lining to the side seams, and just with a real scant, maybe one quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm basically going to start here, go up, and then sew along the piping, come back, and sew the other edge the same way with a little one quarter inch um, seam allowance. And that's just so I'll have a clean edge for later. And then I'll turn the whole thing right side out. I'm going to start right here at the bottom of the center front, and I'm going to sew the really tiny, tiny seam allowance here, just enough to, to catch each other turn and then sew along the neck edge right along the piping stitch line. After I turn the corner where the top of the zipper will be, I'm following the stitch line that I made when I sewed on the piping earlier. With all the layers to go through, I'm slowing pretty slowly, making sure that my needle goes in and right along the stitch line. I also sewed the armhole openings along the piping stitch line just like the neckline. Now I'm done sewing all of the lining to the main part of the dress. After I've checked all the stitching, it looks like everything's good. Now I'll go through and I'll trim all of the corners off. And, really, really important, this is the only time you can do this, like this, snip in the seam allowance up to the stitching, being really careful not to go through the stitching. Okay, after I snip all the corners, which is the last one right there, and I've gone through and trimmed all, all of the turns everywhere. If you don't do that, it won't lay down nice. See how this wiggles so nice? Okay. So now it's time to turn the whole thing the right side out. Right now it looks pretty ugly, especially with my um, 
back side of all my stitching where I sewed the sequins and beads on. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take any one of these corners, um, which I'll probably take this front corner here, and I'll take it and I'm going to use my uh, dowel and I'm going to stick it in through this opening of the sleeve. So here's what I'm going to do. Take my dowel. I've actually, my dowel is just an old paintbrush. And I'm going to start this first corner, which is very nice and sturdy with the piping. And I'm going to just ease it through this long opening, which has the, um, basically the opening that has the, all the beading on it. So hopefully the beading won't inhibit this from going through real nice. Might be a little bit of a tight squeeze. Anyway, I'm going to stick this through here until it comes through um, on the back side. It's a little tunnel. So I'm going to work on that now. It might take me a few minutes. It's kind because of, of how tight this is, that's one reason why I haven't put the boning on the front of the, the dirndl yet, because it's just one more thing to have to stick through this narrow tunnel. So I'm going to put my hand in through the other way, so see if I can kind of find the, the, the little corner as it comes through. And it's getting closer. I'm almost got my fingers it. on it. It looks pretty ugly right now. Then I turn it the right side out and see I've got this little corner. I'm just going to ease it on through, all the beads and everything on it, straight through this opening, but it has come through. There it is. The piping really makes it actually pretty easy to um, turn it all the right side. Oh, that looks beautiful. Now I'm going to do the other side. I guess if this one worked, the other side will too. So there we go. Golly, that's a tight squeeze. Okay, now that I've got it all through, I'm going to take it to the ironing board and I'm going to steam it all down, down flat and so it will look fantastic. That was the hardest thing. That was the hardest thing to do. Okay, looks really clean and nice and it looks like a few of these glass beads came off, but not too many. Okay, it's time for ironing. I added boning and finished the rest of the dress. With these cute pink ribbons and the sparkly apron, this dress is really fun. If you need help making a dirndl skirt, see my video, Making a Dirndl Part 6, Attaching the Skirt. I have other videos that show my unique way to sew on a zipper and many more dirndl ideas. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss my new videos. <laughs>